Hey guys, I'm Liam Norvell and this is Posh Cotney TV and this is our brand new show, London After Lockdown. I'm going to take you on a tour around London to meet some of the biggest names in the hospitality industry and they're going to tell us how they've adapted since lockdown's been lifted. On this Kent special episode, I speak to Marco from Pierluigi's, Joe Courtney from Soul Town Festival, Alex from The Pearl and I catch up with Lee at Eat Well in Beckenham. First up on today's Kent special, I'm catching up with Marco who runs Pierluigi's in Beckenham. Marco, thank you for coming on PCTV and thank you for inviting us to your beautiful restaurant in Beckenham, Pierluigi's. How are you? You're welcome. I'm great. Really well, thank you. How's really life well. been since lockdown's been lifted it's, for you? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. To be honest with you, it's been a bit unexpected, the way things have gone. Yeah, I mean, no, everyone was a bit unsure when, yep. we, uh, when we closed out. Obviously, we went into the lockdown period. It was uh, a lot longer than I thought. You know, I was thinking it was three, four weeks, obviously, we're going to be open and uh, this, that and the other. Lasted for about uh, three, just over three months. Yeah. And uh, to be honest with you, since since we've reopened, it's uh, it's been it's been fantastic. I mean, I closed for for six weeks. Okay. No, I think I closed for five weeks. I reopened on uh, week six, which was um, for takeaways and deliveries. You know, it's something that I never really done before. Mm -hmm. I done a collection service at the restaurant, but I never sort of uh, I never thought about deliveries or anything because at the time, obviously, the restaurant was we we've been quite busy. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so we started the, um, I went on you know, use the usual platforms to come and collect and that. Started off with a bang on the takeaways. And did it go well? Was it, it went fantastic. Really? There were some, uh, some, some really good weeks, you know. It was, um, yeah, I incorporated a lot in it. I incorporated, I started just with the food collection service, you know, yeah. takeaways and deliveries, and I incorporated a sort of like a cocktail and aperitif. I was trying, the dining experience that I offer here, I was sort of trying to, to offer people to, to have at home. If you with you, which includes obviously you've got you know you've got cocktails, you've got aperitives, like the full dining, the full dining experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To your doorstep, and that's when uh, yeah we had the food, we had the cocktails, we had the aperitives, and like I say, there was some uh, some amazing weeks, some fantastic weeks, and it it, it kept me afloat. Kept what me afloat. I, what I love about this place is when you think of Pier Luigi's, you think of Marco. Yeah. Uh, that's a testament to you, really, because mm. your personality. When people come here, yeah. they come to see you, um, yeah. and they come here for the good food and the yeah, good service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You must feel very proud. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a passion of mine. It's a passion of mine. You know, it was open, the restaurant was obviously opened by my father 27 years ago. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, grew up, you grow up in a business. You know, I started from a young age. You know, you get to, you know, you're almost well, 29 now, but I was already responsibility from a, from a very young age. Yeah. And yeah, it, it evolves a lot as well. It evolves a lot. You've got customers still coming here who obviously see me, you know, grow up from a young age. You obviously know dad and, and, know, and know the family. But um, like every business, it evolves. You need to. You got new generations coming in. You got new ideas. Yep. You have, uh, yeah. It's uh, it's it's pushing on and it's pushing on. And uh, the way it's going at the moment, like I say, after since when since when we opened from uh, from lockdown has been has been amazing. Has been absolutely amazing. I've seen on Instagram yeah. how busy it's been. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone I, everyone keeps saying that. I know, but it's social it, media is so big now, it, isn't it? I mean, what a platform though, isn't yeah, it? Oh, for, it's, for, it's, for marketing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Because it makes me. Where every time I see those videos, it makes me want to be here. Yes. Uh, everyone looks like they're having a great time. It's they're the smiling. Idea, There's a little bit of music in the background. Always, yeah. Um, it's a shame, really, that you don't have a bigger space because you'd fill it, wouldn't you? I think the way things are going, yeah. I think if I had two floors, we would we would still fill it. You know, it's. Um, I think you say the social media. That's, I think that's a big part of it. During that lockdown period, I think the social media was so important for the for the takeaways and the deliveries. I mean, I've never worked so hard. I mean, I've got a marketing team that does it for me. Right. But it's, I've never been so much on the social media, you know, to be, to be, you know, to be right for, yeah. the, for, the, for the takeaway service. And I think that during that lockdown period, that sort of build, you know, it was a great build up for them, for them when we opened. And uh, on the 4th of July when we did open, like I say, it's just been, it's like a, to be honest with you, like a new chapter, a complete new chapter. And I'm talking, uh, the business, you know, in a sense, like is, is pushing on. You know, you get a lot more people now who, who in, in the restaurant business, you know, they want to, you know, as a customer I'm talking about, they want to stay on. Yeah. They don't want to leave, you know, in a restaurant game, sometimes you can finish half 11, 12. I mean, I'm getting out of hours three in the morning. Really? At the moment. Wow. Which is, uh, which is good. Yeah. But I think it's changed a lot. Whether that's to do with the clubs not opening or the bars not opening, I don't know. I don't know. But I know people now, they want to come in, whenever they want to come in, 
and they want to spend their whole evening in a restaurant, in a bar restaurant, and have that evening instead of maybe going on afterwards to see whatever plans they got, which is a benefit for me, in my opinion. As a relatively new restaurant owner, yeah. you could never imagine in a million years you'd have a pandemic like we've had right no. now. I mean, what a challenge. I don't know, it fitted in for real. I'll be honest with you, it felt like, um, it's just like you're watching something on Netflix. You're watching a movie, aren't yeah. you? You know, you're watching an absolute movie. You just, you just, it didn't seem real. I mean, someone, people spoke about it before a couple of weeks ago that I think someone mentioned to me, look, they're looking to lock down restaurants and bars and you still don't believe it. Yeah. And then, like I said, they locked me down on the busiest weekend, which would have been the busiest weekend, one of the busiest weekends of the year, yeah. which is obviously Mother's Day weekend. Right. So you have that, you know, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, being Mother's Day is normally the busiest day of the year. Um, yeah, and it just come as a, as a bit of a shock. But even then, I thought, you know, we're looking around three weeks, four weeks maximum. And I started to plan already. You know, we've got Easter coming up. Yeah. And before you know it, I lost Mother's Day. You lose Easter weekend, which is the whole bank holiday weekend. You lose the two bank holidays in May. You're losing, you know, a lot of private functional parties I would have had in that period. So as a business owner, you are a little bit, um, you're always positive. You are always positive, but you are a little bit worried. You think, Jesus, you know, what's what's going on? Mm. Which is then when I thought, I've got, um, I've got to do something. Let me let me start by moving, which was the takeaways, and and I put a lot into it. So you just try and do anything you can to survive. That business took a hit, but from a positive point of view, what can I sort of achieve from that? And I done everything I could. How much have you learned personally as a as a human being during this time? I've learned that. Uh, there's a lot more to your business than you think. There's a lot more that you can build just off one business than, than people think. Because obviously, <laughs> in, my, in my eyes, the last couple of years, obviously as a restaurant owner, you're always thinking, right, when's the next one? When's the next concept? You want to grow the business? Well, you know, you want to try and grow the name as well. But during this lockdown period, it just gave me so many ideas of how to increase this business here, this one business here, and um, it just, yeah, like I say, it's, it's like I've opened, if not one, another two businesses in the space of, uh, of three or four months. Yeah. That's what it feels like, which for me is only a positive because then it shows me that then, you know, we could, I could, before I open another one, which obviously the aim is to, to, to grow the business, but to focus on this one here and, and try and, uh, what's the word? Try and incorporate every idea I have into this main, in main business and see how, you know, how much you can go with, 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 with just the one. So what's the plans for Pierre Luigi's? I've always wondered why there's not a number two. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, they say that. A lot of people said, why, you know, why haven't you opened another one yet? And I think, there's, listen, there's been occasions. I've come close to a lot of new concepts, you know, a lot of new places, some in the country, some out of the country as well, which were, which, you know, they fell through last minute. Um, I don't know, everything for me is about time. It's about timing. You know, it's got to be, the concept's got to be right. The location needs to be right. The, um, everything's got to feel right for me to then, because this one is so, <laughs> it, having the one, you know, when you're trying to perfect it literally day in, day out, it's, uh, it takes up, it literally takes up your life. You know, I'm here sitting you know, I close my mind, but I'm here seven days a week. You know, you're, you're literally, you're nonstop. I mean, the, lock, the lockdown period had me thinking a lot. You know, it was, I was torn between the two. I was torn between, because obviously now there's, a lot, there's, a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of restaurants that are closing, Yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, so there was torn between the two. Do you start looking at another? Now's a good time to buy. People think, you know, of course. It, it could be a good time to buy. 100%, yeah. But at the same time, I, I thought about that avenue. Then I thought, obviously, about obviously the avenue of um, what can I now incorporate in this business here to grow, which is, which is, which is what I've done. There, there will be a number two. There will be a number two, hopefully very soon. Mm -hmm. But like I say, at the moment, the way things are going here, like I've said, like I said to you before, like I mentioned before, it's like I've opened, if not one, two restaurants in a space of three or four months. So timing for me is, is obviously key. Yeah. yeah, so it was a couple of years ago, I was actually very close to opening uh, in Dubai, it was 2018, yeah. which I come very, very close to, which um, it actually fell through, sort of fell through the last minute, which is, uh, which is a shame. Something I would like to do one day, that's yeah. for sure. Definitely, definitely something, you know, to try and do a concept, concept over there. But like I say, it's, for me, it's um, timing, you know, timing, location, because like you say, people come here obviously to see you here. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in my head, me opening another business, you know, Marco needs to be, I need to be in, obviously yeah, a business, in a business that I open. Yeah. It's not, it's not uh, there's not two of me. There's not two of me. You can create obviously a different system or how it goes, but um, that's another thing which, which stays in my mind as well. The way things are going here and the way this keeps going up and up and up, for me then to open another one now, to go somewhere else, get a new concept going, 
the, this business here, yeah, it will always have an established name, but um, I need to dedicate, obviously, on my second, my, you know, my second concept. So we'll see, we'll see. You know, there's a couple, a lot of things going on up here at the moment, but I hope, I hope, I hope to say next year there could be something new. I hope. I hope. That's the aim, anyways. That's well, fingers crossed for you. Fingers crossed, exactly. Yeah. Marco, do you love what you do? Yeah, I do. I do. I got a passion for it. I do. Yeah. I must say, like I said, there's a lot of stress in any business that comes with it. But I think there's a lot of passion in what I do. Which, uh, which, keeps, which keeps you going, you know? Like I say, the hours are long, you're here seven days a week, your whole life, I mean, my whole life is, is this business, is my business. So I think there is a huge amount of passion. I don't think I would do it if it, because you know, the stress levels are so high, mm. I think I don't think I would be in this business. I wouldn't be in it if I didn't have the passion. You know, the passion, it gets you through a lot of, um, a lot of, tired, a lot of tired days, a lot of stressful nights. That passion there just manages to keep you, uh, keep you going forward. So yeah, no, I do. A great passion for what I do. A lot of people that watch Posh Company TV are not yeah. from Kent or Beckham. Okay. So why would they come to Pierre Luigi? Tell, tell me, if I, was, <laughs> if I was standing outside the restaurant right now, yeah. why should I come in? It's, uh, I don't like, you've, you've got to come in to sort of understand that sort of question. Do you know, and I always say to people, they always start to say, so what's your, what's your, what's your restaurant about? What do you provide? Is that and the other? And I like you to come in. You know, I like to come in, I like to be here. I, you know, I want to personally look after you myself. Right. Any new customer that I see come in or any regulars, for me, whether you're coming as a new person or you're coming in as a regular who's been coming here 20, 25 years, I always like to give you the personal touch when you come in. Mm -hmm. You know, which if that's, if that's you know, the, the greet at the door, the accommodate to the table, you know, the aperitive order, whatever it is, looking after you, explaining my specials, making sure whoever's looking, you know, whatever, you know, waiters you've got looking after you, making mm -hmm. sure everything is done properly. But for me, it's hard, it's sort of hard for me to explain. I always say to people, look, you need to come in to understand, to feel, you know, what, what there is here, because there is a sort of atmosphere and ambience that I sort of can't explain to you. You need to sort of, you need to feel it. You know, I said to you before, you still got that authenticness, you know, we've been here 27 years, you still got that authenticness with, with a modern touch. Mm -hmm. But um, you, you need to come in, you need to feel the dining experience, you need to feel the service. The details for me, you know, I thrive on details. I always say to people, you know, whoever you've got coming in, staff wise or whatever, and for me, details is what makes a difference. You know, details, the attention to detail to, to whatever you're doing, whether it's service, the food, the meet and greet. That detail there for me can obviously distinguish, you know, a, a normal restaurant, a good restaurant to a great restaurant. Would you say you're a perfectionist? Very, very so much. Very so much, which is sometimes too much. Right. You know, sometimes too much because you try and perfect Sometimes things that might not want to be, that don't need to be perfected, you know, they can, they, they're okay just to be good. Mm. You know, sometimes you spend a lot of time trying to perfect something so small, which then can obviously jeopardize, you know, you're losing time on other things. Yeah. So from a certain point, I, I'm a perfectionist, sometimes a bit too much, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes a bit too much. But it's a good thing. Of course. I think it's a good thing in this business here. You have to be perfect in whatever I do, whether it's from the kitchen, you know, the service, the meet and greet, just sitting you down to a table, just making sure you're comfortable, even having a coffee, like we're having a coffee on this table. I want to make sure that, you know, you, you've, got a, you've got a great coffee. You've got a good coffee. It's, uh, it's important to me. It's important. Well, look, Marco, we've been friends for a number of years yeah. and I love seeing the success you yeah. have and Thank fantastic. Uh, well done with everything you're doing here at Pierre Luigi's. I'll bring the team down here soon. I'll bring the wife here soon. Thank you. And uh, keep up the good work. I and thanks do. for coming on PCTV. Pleasure. Cheers, mate. Very nice to see you again. See you Have soon. See you. Bye. So I've come to speak to an old friend, Joe Courtney, at his new pub, The Bull's Head in Pratt's Bottom. Let's go and speak to him. Joe Courtney, thank you for coming on PCTV. Uh, no problem, mate. Yeah, it's good to see you. How have you been? Yeah, I've been good. Obviously, same as everyone else for lockdown. Just adapting to the strange times, but yeah, it's been good. So you've uh, invited us into your new beautiful pub, The Bull's Head in Pratt's Bottom. Yeah, we, um, we took over this in January, uh, done a full refurbishment, reopened on the 7th of February, and then obviously lockdown. Um, well, people were told to avoid pubs from the 13th, um, we was okay, but obviously we was a bit precaution, uh, putting precautions in place to make sure people were safe. And then lockdown happened, so it all just came to a stop. Um, and then, yeah, there wasn't much else we could do through lockdown. We was contemplating with doing the takeaways and things like that. And we saw other venues doing takeaways and it, it wasn't working and spilling out onto the road. And it wasn't safe for the customer. It wasn't nice for the residents of that area either. So we decided against it and we rebuilt the back garden, uh, two decking areas out there. Um, and yeah, we just went again and we've reopened and 
it's, it's been pretty successful. The first two weeks, people are safe. And um, yeah, the customs coming in. So Fantastic. It's been good. And you also have the Summerfield. Yeah, the Summerfield down in Lee. Uh, that's more of a wet-led pub. Um, traditional, we have plenty of families coming in there, and three generations of families coming in there, you know, so that's been really good for us. And um, that pub is uh, particularly close to my heart. My dad goes in there and he has been for sort of years. So um, worked in there as a kid one New Year's Eve and always had a dream of owning a pub at some stage after the sort of club nights and everything come to a stop. There was always going to be an age where I couldn't do that anymore. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying having both venues at the moment, yeah. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you're one of the most well-known people in London hospitality, in my opinion. I mean, you're well-known as being a great club promoter. You've got the luxury brunch, two bars, two pubs, sorry, um, and also your latest project, Soul Town. I mean, wow, that, what a story that is. Yeah, that's been great. I mean, I've, yeah, the luxury brunch club, I've got a great partner in that, um, Jay Sexton. And yeah, Soul Town, what a great project that is. Um, that's my business partner and I have started that, Lucy Bateman. Mm -hmm. um, I knew her from school actually and I saw that she was doing a few things around outdoor events and I had this kind of idea in my head of wanting to do something so I heard great things about Lucy and her honesty and integrity so I went into business with her and we came up with this name and idea and in our heads it was just this small local festival that we was going to be going for um, and after year one it, it fast grew into something different our our five-year plan and our goals had changed into becoming a small festival into one of the uk's biggest soul motown festivals and it is starting to go that way until obviously uh lockdown came about but um even with the brand we've been doing some great stuff during lockdown um it all started with how can we use our platform to give back mm -hmm. in such a way that would be good for, for everyone that's in this industry and, and the NHS and stuff like that. And we started with NHS hampers mm -hmm. um, and that fast grew. We, me, Rob and Lucy was meeting every week for sort of meetings and saying, how can we develop this into something more that we can bring entertainment involved and include the music? We've done our NHS hampers, but how can we let the music get involved in this project? Yeah. And that's when we came up with the live streams. So every two weeks we was doing a live stream, sending it out to people. It was all free of charge. We didn't, it was an expense to the company. Um, and then again, another meeting two weeks later and we came up with these doorstep sessions and emotional. It was really? a great thing. Yeah, a really great thing to do. We was basically put a message out there saying that if anyone was in need or they had a wedding that was canceled or anyone that was going through sort of cancer treatment or anything like that, we would come and bring the bus, provide the singer sing free songs on their doorstep, socially distancing. Um, and yeah, it was a really, really good fun project. And it seemed that wasn't our intention to develop the brand in any way, shape or form. It was just to give back. But it seems to have developed the brand. Uh, and we didn't think a brand could grow during lockdown, but mm. it just shows you that if people adapt and use their initiative, then there is some growth in a company during lockdown, which, which we've done. I mean, we all saw the news recently, uh, which you know must have been very hard for you to, to put the message out there about Soul Town not happening this year. Yes, um, it, it was really sad actually. We we get we after all that that we done, we was gave a, given a glimmer of hope, should we say? And um, Boris Johnson announced that outdoor events can go ahead, and the local authorities rang us and said, um, "I suppose you're going ahead now. Would you like to submit a COVID plan?" and we was dubious at first, but then we thought, hold on a minute, and we had another one of our meetings where we bounce ideas, and we had the idea that we could uh, picnic bench the whole field mm -hmm. and reduce the capacity by 8,500 to 5,500 and still go ahead with this. Um, we put it out there on social media. We had great feedback from our customers and, and our loyal followers and started making the plans again. Unfortunately, put tickets on sale. Uh, through the whole of lockdown, we didn't push one ticket sale. I don't know if you noticed, because you, you do sort of, sort of congratulate us on our social media yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And um, we didn't sell one ticket through lockdown, or we, we didn't push for ticket sales. Mm -hmm. But um, when we announced that we were going ahead, we sold a hell of a lot more tickets. Yeah. And then the local authorities came to us and pretty much said that if we don't pull the plug, they will. So we've postponed it now to 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to come with a bigger lineup. There's plenty of incentives for people to keep their tickets. We're doing a live stream on the day, chance to win some drinks vouchers. 
and yeah, we're just hoping that people roll their tickets over to help the survival of the festival. You know, we've done yeah. all the all the great stuff we've done through lockdown. I hope they see that we're doing good for the community as well. So hopefully people will support us. So Joe, putting on a festival has always been a dream of mine. I mean, you've got to be really ballsy to do it. It's a lot of investment. But tell me about the challenges you faced. There's plenty of challenges, new challenges every time we make plans and we was going for the third one this year and there's new challenges that come up every time. I don't think until you're into sort of year four and five, it's gonna run plain sailing. I mean, the first one for us, we sat down after the end of the day, me and Lucy, and we was shattered, but Lucy's great with logging stuff and, and telling us what's fresh on our mind. So we sat down after the festival, asked everyone to leave the office, and me and Lucy sat there and just discussed what we thought went right, what we thought went wrong, where we can improve, and the changes that we're gonna make next year. Um, even stuff to like the amount of fencing that we had, the amount of toilets. Mm. We was writing how many we wanted for next year really? on the evening yeah. of the, the breakdown of that festival. So there's new stuff each year and obviously the biggest challenge for us so far is COVID. Mm. <laughs> I don't think it can get much harder than that. No. But um, we've been on sites before where it's been a day before the festival and an insurance company has said to me, um, your biggest challenge and your biggest nightmare would be day before the festival, you're putting your tents up and a peg goes through a mains and water comes and that actually happened really? year one. So it went through a main by the garden party tent the day before we was meant to open. Panic stations and it, it wasn't, we kept a call head and we, we got through it. They came out, Thames Water fixed it, mm. turf went over and we opened. But obviously when an insurance company is telling you something like that and it happens, you have to start thinking of ways you're going to deal with it. And, and I, I remember that first event and it was, it was a rainy day, wasn't it, that first one? Yeah, it I felt so sorry for you. Anyone putting on an outdoor event, yeah. the one thing you hope is like a wedding day, isn't it? Yeah. That you're going to have good weather. Um, it poured down. It from, poured down. From 10 till 10. Yeah. But then the year <laughs> after, it was fantastic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, bright sunshine. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you, you say it's everyone's nightmare for it to be raining. We actually had people on the day saying, where's the rain? We loved it when oh, it rained really? last yeah, year. Yeah. We got got our sort of wellies on and because I think part of being at a festival is, is the mud and the, the wellies and if you're a first festival goer yeah which um some of our older clientele was because being in the our demographics kind of an older demographic being in the soul Motown mm. and um yeah they was like oh we wanted to get our wellies on and stuff like that so no yeah I think people enjoy it wherever the weather but yeah for me sunshine really made it made it the revenue was great for the sunshine drink sales and Everyone had a great time. I think half of that was mine. Yeah, most of it was yours, <laughs> I think. Um, let's talk about Soultown for next year then. So what can customers expect? What sort of experience do they have? So next year is gonna be our biggest year yet. I think it, it was always going to be this year, but the fourth year wasn't gonna be as big as what we are going to do year four, purely because we wanna give back to the loyal customers that have rolled their tickets over until next year. and. Um, we're keeping the same lineup, but we're going to add another main headliner. Um, we're going to add a couple of uh, semi headliners. And um, we've got the garden party, which is going to get even bigger. That's bringing all things sort of club classics, yeah, yeah. Um, a bit of soulful house. And we're going to put more performances in there. So we're going to have more of a lineup in the garden party. Um, and yes, it's going to be a great show. And then obviously, we're going to try and look to extend it even more. But we want to keep it keep it a manageable number. We don't want it to become sort of too mainstream. We want it to have that sort of family, personal feel so that people keep coming back. I was gonna to speak to you about it actually. I would love to bring PCTV to, to do the backstage uh, and do a collaboration, interviewing some of the acts, some of, the, some of your guests. Uh, and you know, I think it'd be a great collaboration as I know most of the, the people that will come yeah, here yeah, as well. Yeah. I think it'd be great. Yeah, no, it would be good, yeah. And we, we would always be open for sort of media companies and podcasts and yeah interviews to come backstage so yeah we'd, we'd love you to come you always amaze me how many projects that you are doing joe um are you going to be expanding any more um yeah we're definitely looking in uh, to do more stuff i do want to have a pub company one day that has sort of a a nice umbrella of pubs but not not too many just a manageable amount um with soul town we we are looking into the future about, about taking our own venue on uh, myself and lucy doing one together um and making it kind of that soul street food kind of concept. Yeah. So it will come under the Soul Town umbrella, but have a completely different name. And we're, we're looking at doing some pop-up socially distanced brunches and things like that, just to keep the brand alive and to keep, give something back to the customer that have 
rolled their tickets over so they can, can experience Soul Town a bit this year. Because it would be a shame we lost our RB for date as well, which was a bit of a nightmare. But um, yeah, and we've got Abu Dhabi, the Formula One at the end of the year. Wow, what are you doing for that? So in December, we've uh, teamed up with Unique Grand Prix. Okay. And he's got a fantastic boat right by the racetrack. Um, it's all inclusive, food and drinks, and your ticket for the Formula One. And we're doing a two-day Soul Town weekend of there, so. Oh, fantastic, we'll yeah. share that on the, on the show after this, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, great. So, once again, congratulations on all the good work you're doing and, and keep it going, and, and a bigger congratulations for uh, Mrs. Courtney. She's about to have the third child. Yeah, baby number three is uh, due in three weeks. Fantastic. So uh, we're growing the Courtney family as well, yeah, as well as the businesses. <laughs> Amazing, what an empire. Joe, thank you so much for coming on PCTV. No, thanks a Absolute lot. Absolute pleasure speaking to you. You too. And uh, I'll bring the wife here for a Sunday lunch. Definitely, mate. You're more than welcome anytime. Thanks, mate. Liam, thanks you. a lot. Good luck. Cheers. Cheers. So I'm in Beckenham at the Pearl to speak to the owner, Alex, to find out how their business has been affected since lockdown's been lifted. Let's go and check it out. Alex, welcome to Posh Connie TV. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? I'm very good. Thank you for inviting us into your beautiful restaurant. My pleasure. It's nice to have you here. So how long have you been open for? Um, after the lockdown, since uh, 4th of July we opened, so just four or five weeks. Has it been busy? It's been good. It started slow, but it picked up. Uh, it's better than expected. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased with where we are now. Obviously, it's not 100% yet, but uh, it's slowly, slowly. It's getting back there. Uh, I'm sure as the time passes and people trust uh, it's safer to go to restaurants, it, it'll pick up even more. How have you had to adapt? What have you done differently? I mean, we, um, we changed the table settings, etc. There is um, a government, local council helps us, there's this checklist and uh, guidelines um, that we get constantly. Um, basically, we prep the stuff and then um, we arrange the tables. Um, there is a number of uh, things that we have to do, like sanitize and clean up and um, change the settings um, each time customer comes in and goes. There's a lot of signs around, as you've seen. So, um, it was hard to begin with, but we, we all understand the necessity of it. So um, once once it gets going, then it becomes easier. Why do people come to the Pearl in Beckenham? I mean, it's not just one reason, I believe. It's a number of reasons. I, I believe it's, um, you know, visually it's the most beautiful uh, looking restaurant, but uh, it's not just a style over substance. I mean, uh, we, we made a name to begin with uh, for a seafood restaurant, top end of seafood restaurant, but along the way we added more and more. And now we are a seafood and steak restaurant. Yeah. Um, we do good quality food, a good quality service, uh, but very nice surrounding. And I think um, we are the only restaurant that have a roof terrace around here. So that's an attraction as well. So I think it's a combination of all of this. It, it makes us what we are. During lockdown, did you and the fellow restaurateurs in this area get together and uh, support each other? Yes, um, during the lockdown, uh, us and a number of other restaurants, um, we done takeaway um, services and then um, we had get together and we talked about, you know, what's good for us, for community and for everybody else. I think, I think there's a neat community here and um, although there's stiff competition, it's, it's a healthy competition. We help each other very neatly because if there is a number of good restaurants in the area, it draws more and more clients into the area. So it is good for everybody. So let's talk about the clientele right now. Is it similar to what you had pre-lockdown or is it slightly different? I mean, we, we always uh, had a good base of uh, regulars, I would say 60 to 70%. Judging by just uh, last four or five weeks, um, most of our customers are um, still regulars, but uh, mostly under age 50, 55. So it gives me the impression that the, there'll be older clientele uh, hasn't started to come out yet. Um, because of the place as well, we have lounge bar downstairs and uh, dining is upstairs, terrace, etc. We normally we appeal to diverse crowds, uh, crowd, but at the moment uh, most of our clientele is under 50, 55. So once this is gets a bit more normal or people trust uh, the restaurants to go out, I think you know we're gonna get a little bit more busier. So I would say our customers are um, 25 to you know 70. That's all age group but at the moment we are getting customers that are under 55. Was you quite happy with the government help during yeah, the... Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't think we, we could have survived without it. 
Alex, what's next for you in the Pearl? I mean, um, I said to all this stuff as well. Um, we, we just um, got to assume that, you know, we just reopened. We, we didn't have the um, last 11 years behind us, you know, gone back to basics, follow the guidelines and um, do the best we can in times like this. And like you said earlier, you know, um, try to help the community because you can't just survive yourself. You know, everybody has to, you know, high street and the area has to survive this together. Are you planning for more restaurants? Is there expansion on the cards? Um, not in the near future, but let's see what the time's been. Fantastic. Well, listen, thank you very much for inviting us in. I will bring the wife here very soon to uh, experience your amazing menu. And uh, thanks very much for coming on Posh Gothic TV. Thanks, Alex. And for the last interview in this series, I'm still in Beckenham and I'm heading to Eat Well to speak to the owner, Lee Kramer. Lee, thank you for coming on Posh Cockney TV. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you for inviting us into Eat Well in Beckenham. It's a pleasure. It looks fantastic. And actually, I've been here three or four times. But a funny story, the first time I came here was with the wife. And uh, I said, do you want a hot chocolate? And she said, yeah, go on. I went and I brought it out to her. She went, oh, I don't like it. She went, why? She went, it's healthy. <laughs> I went, healthy hot chocolate. I love it here because I'm all about fitness and keeping well. So uh, I can see that. Well done on what you're doing here. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So, what has it been like since uh, lockdown's been lifted here? It's kind of uh, the aftermath of a nuclear holocaust. To be fair, it's uh, that's perhaps a little bit dramatic, but it's quite you know it's uh, been quite surreal. I don't want to keep using the. Uh, the catchphrases that a lot of people are using but it does feel like that we've come out from a you know and everybody's kind of putting their head above the they can't really see the radiation but they they feel curiosity mm -hmm. uh curiosity is getting the better of them and they're kind of getting out and about now which is uh you know it's kind of been like that but i feel like there's a lot feel good now people have, there's a lot more confidence again which is great but now with the potential of uh, spikes and so on, uh, you know, pe people are being a bit more cautious also. So we try to uh, take into account those uh, feelings of people and try and do our best as a business to sort of still operate, but make sure that we can uh, abide by government guidelines. Have you been very busy? We <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> We've been really, really busy. Uh, it's our second year of opening, but this time last year, uh, we were actually 20% less wow. takings wise. So uh, yeah, we, we're happy that we've been able to uh, be very busy this year and give that, that, keep giving that healthy food, you know? We were talking off camera. Um, it's funny, suburban sort of out of the city places are doing so much better than people, uh, some of our other people we've spoken to in the West End, for example. Why do you think that is? Well, it's, it's because people have become a lot more aware of the major uh, corporations, whether it's restaurants or, uh, or, or supermarkets. I, f I feel that a lot of my friends and myself, we've been, I don't want to say violated is a bit of a strong word, but we feel like people are taking advantage of the situation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, supply and demand, you know, uh, su supermarkets have, uh, you know, warehouse loads of toilet rolls, yet there, there's no discounts on toilet mm -hmm. rolls, even probably to this day. And uh, I feel they've, they've taken advantage. You're seeing it that the public are much more supportive, especially in Beckenham. Independent businesses are, are really reaping the benefits of, uh, of the moment, and uh, especially with the support of Beckenham, uh, Beckenham residents and surrounding areas, people are coming in here. You know, next doors, we've got two major uh, retail outlets, uh, restaurant outlets that are very, very popular, but people are supporting us mm -hmm. and other businesses up the high street, and we want, everybody to do well in Beckham and not just eat well you know we want it to be you know in King's Road you've got lots of clothes shops mm -hmm. you know in, in uh, Beckham you've got lots of restaurants and, and bars and everybody's benefiting from each other's uh, you know advertising and so on so it's doing really well. So I grew up in Beckham and, uh, and every time I come back here I absolutely love it and I see these independent um, coffee shops, restaurants, uh, pubs, bars um, and they all seem to be doing very well. And, you, and you're right, you all work together, don't you? There's, there's a big Beckenham community. Definitely. It, we, we've, really, uh, we've really worked well uh, with the locals and we've, we've, they've all decided that, that they've had enough of fast food. 
we've really tried to push on our health, the healthy aspects of our dishes. Um, and it's got a little while for people to say, well, shakshuka, what's shakshuka? You know, and then they've come in there just like your wife with the, yeah. with the hot chocolate. We do a funky hot chocolate and it's taken a little while, but people are starting to see the benefits of that. And our staff are helping, you know, helping um, our customers uh, make decisions on the right food. So we, you know, in, in Eat Well, our freezer is only pretty much for ice cream. Right. Everything, everything else is fresh daily. So we're not, use, again, like the multiples, we're using fresh food. And the important thing as well, in uh, lockdown, a lot of be people have been cooking at home. Right. So, uh, so because we're doing a lot of home style cooking as well, maybe from different, um, uh, different areas across the globe, it's, uh, our food is, you know, uh, multicultural. Yeah. It's worked really well for us. Uh, and the public have re related to that sort of bit of a home cooked feel to it, but something they can't necessarily make at home. I think consumers now are definitely going to be eating more healthier all the time. Because when you have this sort of uh, pandemic where people are worried about, and you've got Boris Johnson saying, get fit, it will help um, you not get the virus or help you uh, combat the virus. Um, I think the healthy eating thing and veganism for the last year or so has been really strong. I think now it's only going to get stronger. So places like this, I mean, it's going to be a gold mine, surely. Well, please God. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've, we've noticed in the last two years, a lot of people didn't know what, as I said before, uh, shakshuka yeah. or jackfruit. Yeah. You know, it was like, what jackfruit? You know, what's mm. that? And, and it's about the whole thing about us is that we embrace veganism and vegetarianism as a part of healthy eating mm -hmm. so we still serve uh, fish because it's healthy of course and we still sell uh, uh, breast of chicken because again it's the uh, arguably the healthier side of uh, of the meat and uh, so that's that's our usp rather than just saying oh we're vegan or mm -hmm. vegetarian so but Sainsbury's next doors to us. Am I allowed to say Sainsbury's? Of course you are. Yeah. Uh, they, they, you know, they didn't have, I don't think they, they barely had a Linda McCartney sausage in there, uh, in the freezer, but now they've got a whole section in there for plant-based uh, food. And it's really good for everybody. People much, as you said, people become much more aware of the healthy uh, uh, concept. Are you planning to expand this, uh, this great little business you have here? Uh, well, we've got some ideas. It's something that we'd like to do, but we've, We've got to move ahead with caution, like everybody else is, you know. And we've we've we're looking forward to the uh, we're looking to look forward to the future, and we're, we're just going to come out and uh, hopefully we're going to be fighting the virus and uh, trying to survive. And if we can build up, that's that's something we all like to do. Um, but you know, I'm used to sort of building up brands and uh, chains and so on. Uh, so it's something that I would I would like to build on for the future. And finally, are you part of the Eat Out to Help Out scheme? We are. We're looking forward to uh, bringing people in to eat well for Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays from all the hours are open. Some people will come here three times a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> Maybe yourself and your family will come. Uh, and, uh, but we, we're doing that for the whole month of August. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and before we go, a little birdie tells me you were the creator of Bagel King. <laughs> Yes. Is that true? Is it, I mean, I went there so many times after a night out from Catherine oh, Perry yeah. back in the day. So you were the reason I put on 10 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll put my hands up to that one. That's, that's, that, that's my moment of fame. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we did that years ago. I was only uh, quite young when I did that concept. But um, thank God it's still there today. You know, 29 years later, people still going in there after nightclubs. Yeah enjoying bagels uh, the only thing is i didn't serve them with bacon then back in the day okay. but now, now they do <laughs> listen best of luck for the future and uh, i love independent places like this and you seem like a great guy so thanks very much for coming thank on thank you very much speak soon you bye too bye. cheers so we've come to the end of london after lockdown i hope you enjoyed the series it's been an amazing journey i want to thank everyone that's been involved the posh Cotney productions team lyle pierre kate all the guests all the venues it's been an amazing experience for me and thank you so much for subscribing and watching PCTV. We've got some incredible shows lined up for you, so stay tuned and keep watching PCTV.